Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and in this series we're looking at making a hand-painted blunderbuss or thunder gun game object. This is a quick video to show how you can paint the glass at the front of the scope. Check the links in the description for more educational content such as this. Check out my buyer's guide for more details on that. Also there's a texture painting playlist so if you're having any difficulty with this then check out that playlist there's lots of answers in there as well. The reference image for this model and the model itself, unpainted that is, is available. Again follow the links in the description. Okay so here's where we got up to last time and we just got the glass at the front of the scope to work on now. So I'll zoom into that and because this is fairly square on like this we have to be very careful of the mirror across the middle because we don't want any really obvious elements repeating to the other side. So when I lay down the sort of base color before doing any of the shading and details, I'll do that without symmetry on. So I'm in the texture paint workspace, I'll make sure the glass is selected and across to texture paint mode. Make sure I've got my mix brush back on and I'll just sample this color, this is a good starting point. Now glass is really quite tricky. With hand painted textures we don't have any transparency because as soon as you turn around the corner you'd see a different location of the background. So we can't paint any transparency in. Again, reflections, as soon as you're moving around, the reflections should change, and therefore we can't really put any detail into our reflections. So when you do glass, it's always very muddy, kind of dirty glass. Otherwise, you have to be a lot more clever with your shaders in terms of having transparency within them, and it kind of moves out of the realm of hand-painted textures. However, having said that, we do actually paint on some variation in the colors and the tone, to give the indication that there is some kind of reflection, even though it's very murky and smudgy. So what I'll do is just that. I'll come across to the green slightly, bring the tone down, brush up and strength up, and just draw as if there's some grass here. It does depend a little bit on your environment. If you know you're predominantly in a forest, let's say, you might have grass and blue sky. If you're on a Martian landscape, then maybe you want more reds. And that is a problem for hand-painted textures. As soon as you change the environment colors drastically, then all the reflections on your object should change as well, which is one of the reasons that PBR shaders are far more common. Okay, so I'll change up the colors a bit more, and there's some items in here, and we don't know what they are, but there's some sort of landscape that I'm drawing here, very simplistically. Just a variant of a few colors here. Okay, so it's very basic there. I can just sort of smudge it up a little bit like this. And there's our basic image, which is our reflection. Again, make sure there's not too much detail in it because we don't want detailed aspects in our reflection because they should move when the camera moves. Okay, so back to the draw brush, we can go across to the multiply now. And I can turn the symmetry on now. So symmetry across the Y and then shade this bottom bit up a little bit more. I'm still on the blues, which I think in this case is actually okay. It's giving it that sort of blue tint might come to the middle a bit more now. Nice and dark at the bottom here. I'll just make my brush a bit smaller and do some of that detail around the very edge of the scope. The blue tint is quite nice and already that's working reasonably well. Might give that a little bit of green coming out here. I'm keeping fairly bright just because my strength is high in my multiply. So keeping the tone bright is actually making it weaker. If I bring down my strength, then I can bring down the brush and it will have the same effect. Okay, so already it's looking a bit like a scope. Next is the highlights. So we bring our tone up and go across to the screen and bring the strength down to start off with. And I'm gonna come across the warm colors slightly just to give it a tiny bit of warmth in here. And remember that you've got the mirror on if you have, if you're following along with me, and then just brighten up this area so if it's being hit by the sun. And there you go. It's fairly straightforward, but that looks reasonably good as a reflection. Not sure about the very middle. Because of my mirror, I'm gonna turn it off now and add a bit of variation in here. And maybe on one side have a, a sun type spot. It sort of comes across and it's following the grain of the glass as if it's really wobbly and rubbish. Maybe another small dot this side if there's some sort of reflective light there as well. And that kind of looks fun. Not so sure about this spot here, actually. I might give it a little bit more, a bit more glow to it. Yeah, I think that's working. I might smudge it up a bit though. And there we go. You can of course have scratches and things like that in your glass if you want to. 
This person's very careful and keeps the scope very, very clean. So there aren't any scratches at all. Let's go back into object mode and just see how that ties in. And that's working relatively well, but you can see as you move around, it kind of loses its sense of shininess. But when it's still like this, it works quite well. Perhaps from this angle, it could do with a tiny bit more shininess just in here, but I'm just kind of playing around really. Okay, so a much shorter one today, but hopefully you get the idea about how you can paint glass like this. Again, it has to be quite a muddy sort of glass. Reflections just don't really work. It can't be fully transparent. So this is about as far as you can push it. Okay, so in the last session, I'll be talking about how you can put this across into a game engine. If you've got any thoughts or questions, then comment below. Thanks for all your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.